Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is very exciting for me because this video is kindly sponsored by Juliana's Perfume. This brand has gotten so much attention on YouTube. I feel like they're honestly the go-to brand when it comes to inspired fragrances. They come in Extrait de Parfum concentration, which is a higher oil concentration than most fragrances, which is amazing. So that helps with longevity and performance. And these scents are inspired by very popular luxury high-end niche or designer perfumes. They retail for $59 to $69 for a 50 ml. So they're a lot more affordable in comparison to their their counterparts, they're vegan and cruelty free. And there's several things that Juliana's perfume does that I wish every brand did. The first thing being when you purchase a fragrance, they include a two milliliter decant sample for you. It's normally kept back here, but I used it up to test out the fragrance before you use your bottle. So if you don't care for it, you can return it groundbreaking I know and you get two complimentary five milliliter samples of your choice as well absolutely genius love the packaging very chic sleek I've also never seen a fragrance brand be so incredibly involved with their customers um, in terms of the products that they produce. They have a poll every month and you can vote on what fragrance you wanna see the house come out with next, which is just so incredibly genius coming from a dupe house. So I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I normally don't buy dupe fragrances inspired by fragrances because I would rather own the real thing. However, if a fragrance is discontinued, this is a great way to have that scent profile or let's say I want more experience with the scent and I'm like kind of trying to debate like am I going to get a full bottle of the original it's a great way to test out the scent see if it's for you and sometimes I'll really enjoy a scent but I just can't justify the originals price tag for example I really enjoy the scent of Tom Ford's lost cherry but I cannot justify that price tag because it's a scent I wear exclusively for layering and it also does not last well on me so I have an inspired version of it and although this is a sponsored video you are as usual going to be getting my real honest thoughts here. Um, I just wanted to shout out the company really quick because they included this in their email to me and I just wanted to read it to you. They said, please feel free to be completely unbiased about what you do like, love, dislike, and even hate. We're completely open and want you to have the creative control to do what you feel is best for you, your brand, and the trust with your audience. I appreciate that so much and I wouldn't be working with a brand if they didn't allow me to be me, but I really appreciate that they included that. So I have five perfumes to review for you guys, and I own full bottles of two of them, and for the other three, I purchased samples so I can give you the most accurate comparison between Juliana's perfume version and the original. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Bad Bitch, and this is inspired by Giorgio Armani's Rouge Malachite, which is my favorite Two bros fragrance ever. <laughs> and get ready because I took extensive, very specific notes comparing the two. So I'm gonna be giving you like time frames, every single slight little difference I picked up. Like, <laughs> I really went all in. When you're comparing the two back to back, like I put one fragrance here, the other one here and go back and forth. Bad B has a bit of a menthol opening. It's also more green, so those spicy herbal notes are amped up a bit more. That opening fades in about 15 minutes. After that, it is very difficult to tell them apart, although Rouge Malachite is a bit creamier and sweeter, also more ambery. So in that initial opening when comparing the two, I'd say they're about 60% similar. After 45 minutes, really can't tell a difference at all. They're like 95% similar. They just nailed it with this one. So if you haven't smelled this or Rouge Malachite before, I will describe it to you real quick. 
It is the queen of tuberose fragrances. It's a tuberose bomb, but it is so elegant and beautiful and bridal. So often tuberose comes off um, very heavy and thick to me. It's a beautiful floral for sure. It just often doesn't feel like me but this is gorgeous. It has Anna written all over it because there's a strong ambery presence to it. You have amber, you have benzoin. It's very creamy. You have ylang ylang. Cashmere in. It almost feels like there could be a vanilla tone in there. And then you get this fresh spiciness from the sage and pink pepper. It's incredibly elegant, feminine, sophisticated, classy, an amazing pick for spring as well. Next we have Oud Orange Imperial, and this is inspired by Fragrance de Bois, Oud Orange Intense. This opens up with something I don't like. It smells like there's some sort of spice blend in the background, very reminiscent um, to the vibe that you get from Hermes Elixir Dermeve. Dried orange peel, resins, patchouli, that kind of stuff. I also get a bit of a spa oil vibe from it. This fragrance is not for me, and same goes for the original. <laughs> I pick up the oud for sure, but it's not heavy. I pick up the musk as well. I'm definitely getting a prominent dried orange peel vibe from this. When you're comparing them, smelling them directly on your skin, the fruits, coconut, and vanilla are much softer in this composition compared to the original. In the dry down, about a half hour in, that's where it starts getting more similar to the original. That opening experience I was talking about tones down, but I never completely lose it. It becomes more creamy. I get a powdery dried coconut. The vanilla amps up. Now the sillage you are experiencing in the air when you wear Juliana's perfume version versus the original and separate days. They are very, very similar. So I'm not talking about your nose right here. I did, I did both tests. That spice blend quality is a bit more prominent in this one, but I still get that in the original. The original is a bit smoother, but this is an excellent alternative. Fragrance Dubois is hella expensive. I don't hate this one at all. I just don't like it and I feel the same like I said about the original. It's unique. Definitely smells niche. This is not your average summer fruity fragrance at all. This smells grown up and it lasts an impressive amount of time. I could still smell this on myself the next morning when I woke up. So talking percentages, because I'm real specific over here. Um, I'd say they're 60% similar when you smell them directly on your skin, back to back in the first half hour. But with a proper, normal wearing experience, they're like 90% similar. This is me really getting in here, you know, doing some scientific research. I am hunting out those differences. <laughs> Then we have Dark Opulence, which is inspired by Guerlain's Tonka Imperial. And this is perfect for Christmas time. Great for all you gourmand almond lovers. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. And although I would classify this as a gourmand, it doesn't smell like something you'd straight up eat. You can pick up the woody notes, a hint of greenness. This smells like an almond biscuit with some sort of Christmas decoration, a wreath perhaps, with some cinnamon. It's warm and vanillic as well. It's not a love for me, but I do think it's good. In the dry down, the almond tones down, it gets more ambery and woody. Directly on the skin, Tonka Imperial comes off more fruity in comparison. I get a juicy, non-tart bergamot and cherry. Not like a blast of cherry, but like cherry undertone, you know, like, Sometimes you get that vibe with almond. The original smells fresher. The pine and cedar pop more. This smells more gourmand. You're getting more almond, tonka, spices, cinnamon in the opening. Directly on the skin, back to back, the perfumes do smell different because different notes are popping more or less in each perfume. But again, after that half hour, they get very similar and low key. Wearing them separately, I actually prefer Dark Opulence. This is just yummier. It's more cocooning, more addictive. I still don't love it. I like it. It's 
the scent profile is just not me. But it's good, and I do think a lot of people would like it. This lasted seven hours on me, so that's good. That's great. And individually wearing them, full day wear test, smelling your aroma, they're like 90% similar. Moving on, Call Me By Your Name is inspired by Guerlain's Gourmand Coquine, which if you don't know, which I, <laughs> you should know. Unless you're new here, of course, and you get a pass. That is my favorite chocolate fragrance of life. And it was so wrongfully ripped from our hands, discontinued. So I was most excited for, most intrigued to try Call Me By Your Name. Unfortunately, it doesn't capture the magic, the essence of gourmand coquine. It gives you an idea for sure. Definitely in the dry down, it's like I can I can like pick up on that gourmand coquine, but directly on the skin, they are not the same. Gourmand coquine is smooth, mouth-watering, powdery chocolate, obviously gourmand. Call Me By Your Name actually smells very synthetic and there's something in here that's quite sharp um, in the opening. I think it's the pink pepper. So I get the vibe, but that synthetic sharpness is in the forefront. And you have dark chocolate in both, but Call Me By Your Name comes off a little bit more dark chocolate because you pick up more of that vanilla and gourmand coquine. Hi, sorry to interrupt our regularly scheduled program, but I forgot to turn on one of my floor lights behind me so the lighting looks different. That's why, it's so professional. Um, anywho, the sharpness does tone down after that magical 30 minutes, but it still holds on to that synthetic quality. For the first 45 minutes hour, they're about 50% similar. After that, it gradually works its way up to 85%. With Gourmand Coquine, it wraps you up in this powdery chocolate, vanilla, spices, rum, kind of scent bubble, and I don't experience that with Call Me By Your Name. It's like I can smell gourmand coquine underneath, like it's there, that scent I know and love so much, but it's being pushed down by that harsh whatever that keeps it from fully coming out. And in terms of performance, this really does not project, you're not getting this, you know, big sillage, but it does last. I could still smell this on myself the next morning. And the last one is Liquid Gold, which was inspired by MFK's Gentle Fluid gold and man this is spot freaking on this is a full-on do I cannot tell a difference as many have said this is absolutely in the same scent family as intense cafe roses Vini, but this is definitely the smoother better blended more refined more sophisticated version and i also find it to be more likable even though those scents are very crowd pleasing and i know a ton of people love those as you might know i'm not a fan of this intense cafe roses Vini dna i think they're great scents like they smell fantastic they're just not me. I don't feel like myself wearing them and I get annoyed for whatever reason <laughs> smelling them all day. Now, Liquid Gold is definitely my favorite fragrance that I've tried within this scent category. And this is a beautiful perfume, truly. I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep playing around with it and try to disassociate it in my head from those other perfumes because I want to absolutely love this and wear it, because it's beautiful. I want to form a connection with this one. I need to focus and think about the vanilla, amber, wood, and juniper berries instead of syrupy, sweet roses, vanilla, and coffee when I wear this. So talking about the scent, this is mainly a powdery, sweet vanilla. You get soft woods, a clean musk, and when you close your eyes and picture it, you can pick up on the juniper berries. It brings it this slight aromatic touch. This is great for almost year round, except for the heat, I'd say, so it'd make an amazing signature scent. If you love gentle fluidity, gold. I cannot recommend liquid gold enough. This is an incredible 
do. So those are my thoughts on some fragrances from Juliana's Perfume. Check them out. They're an incredible brand and very safe to purchase from as well. They have a great return policy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I would appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!